Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Hello. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, we're going to be building, working on the uh, Perfect Cell model kit from Dragon Ball, uh, Dragon Ball Z specifically. Um, we'll do that in a little bit. I will then uh, stream, you know, here for two hours. Then I'm going to go to the airport and get on a plane and go see my family. But I want to say hi to everybody there in the chat. I'm throwing the Bear Cave emote here. Uh, Harold is hosting. Thank you, Harold. Uh, if you are a subscriber, throw that Bear Cave emote back at me. Let me know you're here. Let me know what's up. Um, I did a little bit of perfect sell just to kind of get my hands warmed up. I'm excited to build this kit. And then once we finish sell, because uh, we might do it in this two hours. I'm gonna, actually, my mic is, is pretty hot, so let me take that down a little bit. Um, if we, uh, Lashbrook is here. Hello, Lashbrook. If we do finish that... We do also have 18. That's right. We're going to do perfect sell, and then we're going to do number 18, Android 18, um, right after that. This was per Last Brook actually purposed, uh, purchased uh, perfect sell for me to build. And then uh, Zandra, who made uh, our emotes, uh, purchased the Android 18. So it's very nice and... Uh, full circle a, a real build with bear community posts uh like a, a good little bit of business uh, i want to say hi to everybody here in the chat we are going to wait for a few more folks to join us before we get to the building part of the stream this is just the pre-show hangout um so i'm uh here and i'm excited to build with y'all on a nice uh, Saturday evening. I do want to remind folks, this is a time of the month, generally, where people got on board with Build With Bear. And so, you may need to renew your monthly subscription if you use your Twitch coin. And if you do, make sure you do that notification so it pops up here and we know that you've renewed. Um, and I can give you a shout out and see how many months you did. Uh, so, I appreciate that. Uh, always appreciate when people subscribe. If you can't subscribe, at least give me a follow. Uh, we've got, uh, over 600 followers, which is rad, but I would, uh, you know, always love to turn some of those followers into subscribers. So I keep doing this nonsense. Lashbrook says like this notification and it has been a subscriber for 15 months in a row. Yes. Lashbrook, that kind of notification. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, you've been here, uh, for quite some time and we do. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Lashbrook, for your continued support, including this model kit, which, I don't know, let's just get to it. Um, Saturday's always a little lighter when it comes to uh, viewers than Thursday, uh, which I understand, especially um, a Saturday right now. I bet some people are out at holiday parties. I did mine earlier in the month, the only one I usually go to, uh, that, that time when I did a Saturday afternoon instead of Saturday evening. Uh, so I understand that people um, have other things they're doing and might not be able to come hang out here with us. Uh, no problem with that. All right, so we're going to do C13 and C12. So we are building Perfect Cell. Um, now you may notice that our, um, our uh, overhead is different than how it looked on Thursday. Uh, after reviewing the footage, I decided I didn't like how it looked. Um, the angle I had for the new piece of gear that I bought did not like. So I modified it by combining that with the crane arm we already use. I now have a different way of hanging the crane arm, which I like better. It's way more overhead. It's more way more top down than being on an angle. Um, I like it uh, very much. Uh, it gives me room to move around in, and then hopefully people will like how it looks. Uh, so, you know, oh, as always, let me know how you feel about it. Uh, either here in the chat or send me a message if you don't like or if you do like what I'm doing here. Because um, I always like feedback from folks about how I'm uh, doing this. It's not the easiest thing in the world. As you can see, there is some fuzz over here. Um, my lighting still isn't perfect. Uh, I'm still working on that. Uh, 2019, I will, uh, I don't want to say like fix the lights, but I will work on that 
to try to get to somewhere where where it's like better you know i am definitely going to work on trying to uh complete my lighting issues and like get it to a base where it where it's you know solid uh so we're working on cell's head right now lots of layers and cell this isn't that um certainly not that uh, uh difficult or like you know this this kit doesn't have a lot of pieces to it uh, a lot of different shades of green and black um but yeah i mean this is one of those things where like these kits are intricate but because they're humanoids or aliens uh, but not robots. They're small on the small side. So they're not super hard to put together. Uh, I remember when we did Boo. I mean, Boo took like an hour and change. It was Kid Boo, which is small. Certainly. But we've done Kid Boo. We've done, done Gohan. We've done uh, um, Krillin. So we've done some small ones. I do, I hope that, I don't know if it's going to happen, but uh, the next two kits, I'm going to do a, a pair of kits that I'm giving away for December, because it's December, uh, but the kits I give away to the subscriber, um, one is a Goku, and one is a Krillin. Hello, the Hollow, and welcome. Uh, so I'm doing Goku and Krillin. Uh, before I mail that out, I hope we finish Android 18 so that I can pose them together with the self-destruct thing, because that would be fun. But, uh, yeah, that's the next thing I'm sending out to people is uh, a Goku and a Krillin. Because uh, it's December, so why not send out a kit to two people? We'll do that a week from tonight on Saturday, December 29th, which is the uh, last regular build stream of the year, December 29th. Um, of course, I am streaming on uh, Monday December 31st, I will ring in the new year by streaming. That's my monthly bonus game stream. Playing some Quiplash and other party games from Jackbox with chat, as well as a couple other things. That's the plan anyway, because I think that would be really fun. And I'd rather do that than sit in a bar and not drink. But that's ahead of myself. Right now, I'm building. I did. Now, you might be asking yourself, Pat, you're leaving Sunday morning and coming back Thursday afternoon. Did you plan your trip around your streaming schedule so you would not have to reschedule or miss a stream and still be able to go see your family for the holidays? And the answer to that question is yes, I did do that. Um, I still managed to get plenty of time with my uh, folks and get to see them and celebrate. Uh, and then I don't have to worry about missing a stream or failing like I did last year where I tried to stream. Uh, really tried hard to stream, but did not work for my parents' place. Now, I, I might just open up my laptop, throw on OBS, use my built-in webcam, and like maybe do a like test to see if it works and... Maybe I'll do, like, on Wednesday the 26th, I might do, like, a, hey, let me look at presents. Let's see what's up kind of stream. I've been thinking I might do that um, because, as I said, I think I said this on Thursday, it occurs to me that I might not have reset my location for with Twitch. And I might have been trying to, in South Carolina, ping the New York server. But I also think their internet might not be good. So it was probably a combination of those two things. Uh, the Hollow says, being sober in a bar is beyond boring. It's like putting on uh, they live glasses for drunk people. Now, here's the thing. I, I always want to make this clear when I talk about um, being sober uh, in public, especially places where there's drinking or private parties, things like that, when I'm around people that drink. Uh, I got no problem with people having some beers and or some booze and relaxing and having a good time. Uh, the choice I make is not a choice that I demand other people do. I'm not that kind of way. But I will say, um, I, in my later years now, have a lower and lower tolerance 
for messes of people, people that hurt themselves, people that, you know, are not fun drinkers. Uh, you know, like I, I, I have less of a uh, positive relationship with those fine folks. More to the point, I dislike that very much. So, uh, but I don't mind hanging out in a bar if people are drinking, you know. I'm not opposed to it, especially like if it's a bar. So here's the real thing. The real honest truth is bars where you can have a conversation are more, very important to me. Bars with good food are very important to me. I'd rather go to a Buffalo Wild Wings and have and sit at the bar at a Buffalo Wild Wings or sit, you know, not the bar, but have drinks come from the bar at a Buffalo Wild Wings than I would at a very loud bar with music playing and people shouting into each other's ears. I have very little interest in that kind of thing. The Hollow says same here, but I have a stronger personal opinions on societal level. Yeah, I understand. Um, people used to laugh when when I would uh, when I was you know in my twenties going to bars a lot more. Is that uh, before it got banned in New York? That when I first moved to New York, you could still you know you could smoke inside, and then they banned it, so smokers had to go outside to smoke. And I would go out with them a lot because it meant that I could talk with a couple friends who were smokers and, you know, carry on a conversation. I'm having a little trouble with this. I don't know why. Okay, there's a little bit of uh, excess here. I'm going to file it down with my file. Uh, this kid has one sticker. I'll put it right there. A mouth. A big old mouth. Oh, let me put it so you can actually see it. A mouth. That's the only sticker. Uh, uh, juxtaposed, Android 18, lots of stickers. Because there are several faces. There's two faces here. But one face doesn't use the sticker. We'll, sh we'll see that later. But Android 18, lots of stickers for the many faces of Android 18. It makes sense. Much more expressive of a character. There we go. We got it. Had to trim out that piece a little bit there. So we're already we're already looking at our cell. It's already. I mean, does not work well on this camera, as you can tell. So I'll do this. Hi, Harold. Uh, put it right there. There you can see. I gotta get used to where my new cam, where the overhead camera is. But yeah, there's the head. Um. Uh, bless you, says, hey, Pat, I'm working on a kit now that must have, like, 30 stickers. Frowny face. Yeah, I mean, we had a few stickers in the perfect grade, um, not the perfect grade, the 160 non-grade we just built. Especially when you're dealing with a high-grade kit, you're going to have a lot of stickers. And this, you know, these kits don't have a lot. They're usually just for the mouths. Um, like, this kit has, uh, these red for the eyes, right? They could be stickers, but instead they just made the, the red eyes for it because uh, it's a smaller kit. Um, but they, yeah, they went for it, which I appreciate. I do appreciate that. I got to remember, if I put stuff over there, you can't see it because of my, my body. Uh, yeah, I'm still getting used to the new set, but I do like this overhead. It does increase the shadows a little bit, but I think it's going to be okay. And in the long run, I think this will be a better setup um the one issue i do run into with this setup which i didn't have with the one i tried on thursday was my monitors are heavy and they're in the end of a table so when this table moves it moves this camera uh because it's on a uh a pole uh that is attached to the table as well so i think if i had a sturdier table that might help but i also like this table. All right, so we're going to build two faces here. So we are pulling out that there. We'll put that aside for now. We're going to fully build one face, and then we will fully build the other face. And this is a thing where it will slot in the two different faces into the head. So we will work on one, and we need a two. 
but yeah, um, I, I mean, I don't find myself at bars that much these days. Uh, first off, um, I now dedicate two of my evenings a week to streaming. So that decreases the amount of time I am at a bar. Uh, because it, And then my Friday nights, I sometimes end up there after some shows or, you know, meeting people afterwards. But, you know, I'm also getting older and it... Uh, for me, I have more fun going to other venues, to another stop. And then also, a lot of the places I go, folks that I know that want to have a drink can get a drink there. I also don't have a lot of friends who are looking to get obliterated or so drunk that they're having a problem. Uh, there's just not there, not the scene that I'm in right now. I am, uh, I'm an old man, so... It's just a little different. But like I said, I've got, you know, I've got my issues with, you know, people who are hurting themselves via uh, alcohol. But if you're not, if you're just like, I don't know, I drink. That's what I do. That's how I relax. I'm like, okay. Harold says, dude, you're younger than me. Uh Harold, I, I know, I know. Um, when I, And you know that I'm being tongue-in-cheek when I say that. I mostly say that because, like, I've just been around for a long time, uh, especially in, you know, went to bars for a number of years. But, yeah, I mean, I'm 38. I'm not, I'm not an old man. But uh, we're, we're up there. Uh the Hollow says millennials are killing bars with this one weird trick not going. Yeah. Uh, millennials are killing because they'd rather play board games and then board game bars open because they were like, um, well, play your board games here. Play your tabletop games here, please. What if you did that here? Which is, you know, not the worst idea because uh, there are people who are like, yeah, all right. Um... Uh, hello, Zorbs, and welcome. Uh, uh, Mega Crane says, do you have a, this is the worst bar. There is a bar on my street that is very loud and fights break out semi-frequently. I have only been there once. It was the only bar I've been into that made me feel uncomfortable. So there are a few places in New York, because it's New York. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, it's not the same New York that some people, uh, experienced. I, you know, I can't claim that, that I've, you know, live in the same rough and tumble New York that other people do. But, um, you know, there are some rough places I've been to that people like a lot. Most of the bars I go to that are just like loud and I'm not into that, you know, like that's really what it is. Um, cause like, okay. There, I mean, there are clubs. There are like some clubs that like, you know, somebody will be like, Oh, we're having our birthday party here. And, and I'm like, no, uh, uh, Zorb says this kit looks, this kit looks really cool. I think it is cool. Um, all right. So we got one of our faces. I'm going to put it in the overhead shot so you can see it. Um, w this is our smirking cell. Uh, we can, we're going to build our other face, but I'll attach it here so you can see what smirking cell looks like. Hmm. Did I mess this up? Um, smirk it. There we go. There's smirk and sell. Hmm. Did I miss a step? No. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, okay. I put this together. No, no, that's right. Okay. I thought I might have put this together wrong, but I think I did. Okay. We just get all these pieces together. We'll put together one cell face and do that there. Uh, hey, Asmo, and welcome. Between my socials, uh, sensory issues. Yeah, bars and my thing. Yeah. Uh, I understand what you're saying, Harold. Um, I totally get what you mean. Um, yeah, I mean, bars were my, weren't my, th never been my thing. But also, like, like I said, if that's where my friends were going to go after a show or something, you know, like, okay, I'm fine with that. Or like if we're going to hang out at a place and that's where we chose to hang out. I'm like, okay. 
So I don't know if I, what I'm doing wrong here. Okay, so that's how it should look. Um, this p this thing is like the instructions here are a little less than ideal when it comes to how this should be set together. But okay, no, that's not right. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna take this. I'm, we're gonna take this apart here, and I'm gonna see if I did this wrong. Because it is possible I just did this wrong. That's the back head. That's the front head. Hmm. Forgive me, folks. But yeah, I gotta wedge this apart. See if I can get this going here. All this green, like my green screen monitor is not, or uh, the webcam that has the chroma is not enjoying all of this green. The problem is that like, there's the back of his head and the front of his head and they look similar. So that it's totally possible that I just put on things wrong. But it also could just be these were wrong. Let's try that. Uh, I will say the Dragon Ball um, kits, I think, look really cool, and they end up being cool kits, but they're not my favorite um, for, as far as modern kits go. Modern kits are usually way more uh, hand-holdy and uh, explain themselves all. And it's also weird because there's lots of English in these kits, and it's still rough. Um, I find with friends I joke around with, the only real difference between drinking and not drinking is things are safer when they matter. I understand what you mean. Uh, I think there were some other Gloomhaven players that watch. I disrupted the session that saw these players get root to retire characters. It was awesome. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool, Asmo. Um, all right, that's what it was. I put on the sides of his head on wrong, and now... This face fits in better, I think. We'll check it, but I think that worked better. But yeah, I don't necessarily love some of these designs here. Uh, they're not my favorite kit uh, kits. I think they look really cool, but as far as the bills go and the instructions, they do leave something to be desired. All right, I'm going to try the other face. I'm going to put the other face together and see if we end up doing better there. And then you can watch me put on a sticker, the one sticker. Gloomhaven really sounds like a band name, says The Hollow. I don't disagree with you, The Hollow. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, Saturday evening. Um, as I said, I'm going to upload this to YouTube, send out a Patreon video uh, link to the video. And then go to the airport. And that's going to be all coming up pretty like boom, boom, boom. Uh, fortunately, my trip this year. Uh, happy holidays to you, the hollow. Uh, my trip this year is uh, I had to figure it all out. I had to get a, um, a ticket in Newark which is not close to where I am. I normally fly out of JFK, which is closer to where I live than, uh, than the alternative, which is um, not close to where I live. So I'm uh, dealing with that. Um, okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty frustrating. Okay, actually, so off here I think I miss uh, I, I did a step a little wrong and that might be why things are weird um, but yeah so it's a bit of a commute for me to get to the airport tonight slash tomorrow so but it should work out all right not too worried about it folks I'm just figuring this out here all right 
Uh, all right, so that, that's that head. And then we will build this head here. We've got to apply a sticker. But yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, spending some time with my family and relaxing. Uh, just sleeping in, going to bed early. I will be able to do both those things. And that should be really nice to do both, sleep in and go to bed early, eat a bunch of food. Uh, I will see my cousin and uh, his wife and their kids. So that'll be cool. Only see them not, not as often as I'd like. Oops. I am uh, failing to apply the sticker. I'm doing my best here, but. All right. Okay, I think I applied that right. Just put pressure on it. Yeah, that should be okay. We'll see what happens when I put this together, but I think I got the sticker in the right spot. We'll see. Okay, so that goes, uh, screws on there. Eyes have to, I have to do the other eyes. So there. And now we're done with this sheet because as you can see, it only contained two sets of eyes. So pretty easy to be done with E. I'll just put that there. And then we put those eyes like this. Whoops. The sticker came right off. Might be one of those things where we just use the other mouth because the other mouth did not involve a sticker and therefore won't be bad, but it um, doesn't seem to want to stay. Or I get a dab of glue and reapply it with the dab of glue, tiniest dab of glue, and just kind of do that. Or a little tiny piece of double-sided tape, maybe. You know, I got options. I can always do that later. Um, but right now, it's nice to be able to get some of this done. And move on to the next part of the kit. Uh, I'm not a big holiday person, says Asmo, but I had that awesome Gloomhaven session, rolled credits on my game of the year for 2018, wrapped up some major work projects, and have tomorrow and Tuesday pretty much to myself. It's shaping to be perfectly fine. Asmo, that sounds like a lot. You know, not everyone does, you know, holidays the same, right? Like, it's that thing where it's pretty cliche, the decisions that people make about what is a holiday and what is you know, like, and how you celebrate that holiday. To me, it's always been like, end of the year, we should hopefully be able to take it a little easy, you know? If we can be surrounded by friends and family and in a, in a positive way, and we can have moments of relaxation and, you know, tidings of good cheer and all that, like, yeah. But also if, like, the holidays are, a bit of relaxation, a bit of time apart from folks, a little, you know, like rejuvenating, getting extra sleep, you know, getting that massage you've been looking for, just catching up on your anime, you know, like whatever. I'm interested in people like finding those moments and having those good times. And that's way more interesting to me than, you know, like doing what you're quote unquote supposed to do. All right. Well, that turned out okay. Here is our big mouth uh, cell. I'm lucky to look a cell with a big old mouth. And we're going to go with that mouth instead of the other mouth. So I'll put that in there. Put that right there. All right. Now we get to move on to the body. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, I hope that people just ha take it easy and relax and uh Whatever a good holiday means to them, they get that, you know. For me, it's, you know, I want to see my folks. They don't, they live in the South. I live here in uh, in New York. And so I don't get to see them much anymore since they retired. I did see them twice this year already. So, 
it's been more than normal for me, which has been great. Uh, but yeah, I'll go see them, and then I'll be away from New York and the hustle and bustle, and I'm coming back on Thursday, so I won't be gone that long. Uh, I will play a few games on my laptop, uh, some itch stuff that I've been looking at, including something that I want to look at for um, my Let Pat Play, for the the one that will go up on the 30th. I have to figure out what that's going to be, but I have something that came out on itch that looked kind of fun and promising. So I'll be looking at that stuff, and then really catching up on podcasts, listening to a lot of the Game of the Year stuff for Giant Bomb. I'm, I'm still behind on all the stuff Waypoint put out already, and I want to catch up on that um, and hear what they have to say about things. So it's like, for me, it's like a good, those days are good. And I still have to do all the work stuff that I normally do, right? I still have to keep an eye on stuff. I'm out of town, but I'm still going to be replying to emails and talking to people about stuff and keeping, you know, the work thing going. Uh, but I, um, I still, you know, find time to check in with people and hang out and just kind of relax. And then the nice thing is, so I come back on Thursday, then I don't have to work again until Sunday, the 30th. And then I'm not working on the 31st or the, or January 1st. So I have, and then I work on the 2nd. And then I don't work again until later in January. So I set myself up for a bunch of like random little days where I'm not working, but I'm still like going to be around. So I get to do some relaxing in New York, which is great because that's where all my stuff is. And I'll be able to stream and uh, I might try to do some bonus stuff. I mean, I'm definitely going to do that bonus uh, on the the 31st is my uh, bonus game stream. But I might try to find some other time to stream around that I don't know we'll see uh, I hope you all are gonna have a good holiday um, and uh, I'm glad you're here with me now it's very fun um, I don't know when but uh, I'll say it because uh, other people talk about it too I am gonna be uh, my uh, top 10 games of the year 2018 will be on giant bomb on the website so I'm excited about that. Uh, I am always, always like pleasantly surprised when I get asked to do it. So uh, I, uh, Alex reached out to me about doing that. And I said, yes, uh, I'm more than happy to do it. So pleased that I was invited to. Um, so I'll be doing that. Uh, I don't know when that's going to go up. They never quite say. Um, uh, yeah, heck yeah, 10 entries of Yaku Zero. Um, and then Lastbrook says, I'm a little jealous. Today was day four of 11 days straight and I'm working. Lastbrook, I'm very sorry to hear that. If it means anything to you, I ended up with six days in a row leading up to this break. So I'm looking forward to that was six days of the rows plus my day off was three meetings about my job. So it was just like I wasn't working, working, but I was still working. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm really looking forward to having this time away because I had a bunch of days in a row. Eleven is a lot. I'm sorry to hear that. Last Brook, that's that's a lot of days. I hope you are well compensated for it, especially in this end of the year. Um, I understand, you know, like, I don't, you know, I don't know where, what your work situation is, but I, you know, sometimes folks got to work extra so that other people who've been there longer can not work as hard. And then hopefully that comes back to pay off for you. And it's in in some point, Uh, I certainly did that at different times in my life where I had to, uh, I had bad shifts so that other people could have good ones. Uh, Asmos has been there many years, uh, sympathy. Uh, yeah. Um, also when I, my parents lived in Connecticut, you know, I'm here in New York, I wouldn't take time off at the end of the year because I was just going to go to Connecticut. So some years I would 
go home on Christmas Eve and come back the day the 26th and go to work that night so that other people who were traveling could be with their families. And so I did that for a number of years where my holiday was just the days we weren't working or I would cover shifts so you know on days that weren't my days so that people could go. And I did that and I wasn't mad about doing that either as a tech person or as a house manager. I, I was happy to be able to help people and especially when I was an hourly employee, you know, forced days off because of a holiday would sometimes, you know, hurt the old paycheck. And so I would look forward to covering for people. And now that I'm the boss or a boss, uh, I'm grateful that my hourly employees are willing to work shifts for me. I've got two shifts being covered so that I can go and see my family. Otherwise, I would not see them as much because I work sun. I work the you know the nights I work besides the other stuff I do are Sunday through Wednesday. So if I had to fly on Christmas Eve and fly back on the 26th so I could go to work, I mean I'd do it if I had to, but I wouldn't want to do it. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to have employees that are able willing and able to cover for me and then i kind of don't get mad about them covering for each other and using their sick leave which you know they should use by the end of the year but also probably shouldn't use when they're not sick it's a weird thing where i'm like well okay so you so you're sick huh Cool. I'm not going to say anything because you're working for me, but don't tell other people this is what's happening. Let's keep that between us. Because I don't know how well, I, I don't really know how that stuff works. But uh, I did entitle myself so I could get extra cash for Pack South. That part that actually sucks is I'm like on day two or three being sick. That's. Uh, that's rough. That's very rough, um, Lashbrook. Yeah, I mean, I hope you have some extra money and it makes Pack South even more fun for you because you can do some more stuff and you're not like, you know, penny pinching and worried while you're traveling. I've been there and that's never fun. Um, uh, Asmo says, it's kind of funny. My family's far enough away that I just say, ah, screw it. Say, screw it. I'll see them later and cover for people so they can take days off. Uh, that's awesome. I love that so much. Um, the Hollow says, save the days for Super Bowl flu. Yep. That's the, hey, that's the nice thing about working at a comedy theater. There are people that love fucking football in the UCB comedy scene. John Robert, who just said, hey, Pat, love the stream. Thanks for the kind words via Crystal. That's a football fan, a college football, certainly. Uh, but not as many. Neither of my employees would ever really want to take off uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, and I don't mind working the Super Bowl. Uh, I, I've certainly gone to a Super Bowl party in my life, but like, it's not, it's not a priority for me or my employees. But John Robert, it's so nice to see you in chat. Uh, thanks for the kind words via Crystal. Of course. Uh, I loved seeing Crystal. Give her all my love. And it was so nice having you uh, there in spirit at that party. Um, and nice to have you here in the chat. Uh, John Robert Wilson formerly lived in New York. Uh, and we did many a thing together. Many a show. Uh, a former uh, EC, EC, UCBW, I said ECW, UCBW, uh, wrestler and, uh, longstanding improv team that I have not seen in a while. I need to see Thank You Robot at Caveat. I have not seen them. I, uh, I j definitely need to go and see those friends at some point soon, but I have not. It is occasionally hard to motivate yourself to go to a comedy show. Speaking of which, I'll mention it uh, when we take our you know break where I talk about stuff that I wanted you know want y'all to see. But um, 
I'm very excited to be doing a show in January. I'm going to be doing Shit Arcade. That is Mike Drucker's show. Um, it's a Friday night, 10 p.m. at Union Hall. Uh, January, I want to say 18th. I am now double checking. That is January 18th, 10 p.m. Shit Arcade in Brooklyn, New York. If you are in the New York area, uh, feel free to come by. You buy your tickets in advance. Save a little money. Come see me. Uh, Gita Jackson will be there uh, from the world of, of games. And then a bunch of fantastic stand-up comedians. And uh, Drucker pulls some great, terrible old video games. Some of which are like known like, like Shaq Fu was played pretty recently. And that is a, a known quantity. But also... He pulls in some less known games that are not classics, like the McDonald's um, edutainment game that was terrible. Woof! That was a rough game to look at. Uh, so, yeah, that's a really fun show, and I'm very excited to do it. I've seen it a bunch, and then Mike asked me to be on it, and that's going to be great. Um, because it'll just be a lot of fun people. Make it a thing. Uh, All right, put that there. We're going to put the stinger on here. Now, of course, uh, Perfect Cell doesn't need to absorb anybody at this point because he is now perfect as he has absorbed uh, Andrew, Android, Andrew, Android 17 and 18. And it's become perfect. But, uh, it's still can put that on there. And there's the stinger in the back. Stinger's in the back there. It's good. All right. Okay. So we finished, uh, most of the body there. We are now going to move on to, let's see. All right, yeah, now we're going to do the wings here. Finish off the chest here by making some wings. Some wings and things. Let's see. A one. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, it's time to chat a bit about some anime. First thing, um, two shows that I watch uh, weekly had their last uh, episodes, their 12th episodes of the season. Uh, neither show was a 13-episode show. So we had um, the last of Jingai-san no Yome and the last Ms. Vampire Who Lives in the Neighborhood. Jingai-san no Yome, as I said, is a three-minute thing. It was cute. The last episode was really fun. Um, it's a sweet show. It's the one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Uh, I did have somebody send me a tweet the other day that was just like, hey, I watched that weird thing about high school boys who marry monsters. What the fuck? And I was like, yeah, I know, right? It was like, no, I liked it, but what? What was going on with that? It's really weird. In short, um, that's all I want to say about that. And then uh, Ms. Vampire Who Lives in My Neighborhood it was really touching and sweet the last episode of that show. They, um, they went full circle because it... Uh, they ended up going back to this place where they met. That show was really sweet and fun. I love the premise of a uh, high school girl moves in to become the roommate of a vampire uh, who is like into anime and doesn't know enough about Japanese culture and kind of relates mostly to anime. Like there's a moment where she's like, where he's, where they're like, oh, I've never been on my school roof before. And the vampire Sophie is like, what? Japanese high schoolers don't eat on the roof? And he's like, no, we're not allowed up here. And it was just like a fun little moment in that show. Really sweet, really cool. Uses the premise well, I think. It's very gay. So queer. Um, and overall, just a great show. Uh, Asmo says, I am now... Imagining Cell absorbing Andrew WK and agreed that would make him perfect. Okay, yeah. I can see it. I can see that uh, 
sell absorbing answer to WK. All right, let's put some wings on. We're going to put some wings on this thing. Put some wing on our cell here. Um, but yeah, those are two shows I watched. Um, we are now getting to the end of the season. But right now, um, of course, uh, it's a double uh, season order for that time I got reincarnated as a slime. And Skullface bookseller Honda san still has one more episode left. I believe. Yes, I believe it's a 12 episode. So I believe there's one more. So I still have a little bit more. Uh, two shows that I still have, like, you know, one more episode. And then stuff doesn't really come out at the end of December that I'm interested in. And then it won't come out again till January. And then there's some new stuff coming out in January that kind of seems kind of cool. Um, I, st I, have not, I haven't fully looked into it. Uh, there is a slice of life fantasy show about a group of girls that look that are like you know different uh, like a fighter and a mage and go around and having adventures because the hero the big hero defeated all the monsters so it's kind of safe and easy to become a hero it seems like so that's that show seems pretty cool and uh, I'm gonna check that out like I think that looks like a show that I would like. Um, other than that, there isn't a lot that I'm super, like, I know that I'm going to be watching. Um, there's something that, uh, Crunchyroll is actually doing the dub of as well. And it'll be on their site. I think it's called Shield Hero. And that looks like it's a harem show. It's a, it's definitely a transport to another world show. Uh, and it looks like there are some ladies that think this dude is awesome, but it also seems like he's not awesome right away and people don't like him. And that's an interesting take on the genre uh, because normally those shows are you go to another world and you're incredibly awesome and badass immediately. And so to have a show where you're not that seems like it may be cool. So I'll be into that. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really done the research. I know that uh, around Christmas, there is that... I'm going to actually brighten me up here. I'm a little dark here. So let's see if I can filter this. Kind of brighten things up a bit. Let's see if I add some contrast. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, uh, we're now putting the pecs on uh, sell here. So we'll add sales packs. Oh, get in there. Snap it in there. Come on. Come out. Come on. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, sales at work. There's a bonus sales at work that's going to come out. And there hasn't been word if that is going to get picked up by Crunchyroll uh, and officially released because it's a TV special. Um, but uh, I'll find it on Fansub. Looked like a, ra a rabbit there for, for a sec there, Pat. What the... Uh, who looked like what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I now look like I have bunny ears. Now I get what you mean, uh, John Robert. We'll leave it like that. That's pretty fun. I got a stinger, though. That's weird. Why do I have a stinger? There, but now I have rabbit ears and I don't have a singer. So we'll leave that like that for a bit here before we add our, uh, that. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. Uh, okay, let's add our chest here. We're going to build our chest part there, our waist, I should say. 41 and 42. Um, but yeah, that's about it for, for anime. Uh, I mentioned it on Friday or sorry, on Thursday, um, black clover is heating up. It's getting kind of cool. They spent, they clearly spent a lot of their budget on this last episode. Uh, it, I think it shows cause it was pretty intense. Uh, as far as the action goes, it's been a while since we had that. There's some good fight scenes leading up to it, but this one they like clearly spent a lot of money. And it's that thing where they're 
you know, powering up the main character. So it's a real shonen show now where he's just like going through a transformation. But uh, it's still like the 60 something episode. So if you were going to start Black Clover, you'd be like, what's up with this goober? Why is he so weird? All right. And then we'll put our head on there. There's our cell so far. Keep that going there. Cell. Bunny ears. Uh, all right. Let's work on some arms, shall we? Actually, you know what? Let's take this time to talk to y'all about how uh, what you can do to support this stream. First and foremost, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you're not following, uh, give me a follow. Set your notifications so you get uh, you know when I go live. Um, having viewers is obviously super important. It's why I'm doing this. This is what you can watch and enjoy. So thank you very much for that. If you would like to subscribe, subscribing is a great way to support me. You can use Twitch coin. If you have Twitch Prime, once a month you can do that. You could also use actual money, uh, which either is fantastic a reminder if you are a subscriber using twitch your twitch prime uh and you don't spend money uh well you have to manually do that every time it renews um i think there's a way to you can set a thing now that it'll tell you but yeah you can take a look at that make sure that's happening um you can also support me if you don't feel like using twitch i have a patreon i'm at 130 dollars on patreon I'm trying to get to 150, whereas 150, I will add another weekly stream. It'll be two hours and Mondays in the afternoon. So you could join that. That would be fun. Uh, no need to, but you could do that. Uh, there's some bonuses. I'm going to shoot a new video for next year. Um, but right now, uh, I added a new tier. I went back and forth. I said $7. It's now $6. There's a $6 tier where you don't get any uh messages for me it's just like set it forget it support me on there for six dollars a month if you don't want like access to stuff early and you just feel like shooting me an email um you could do that um no need to do that but you could do that i wanted to have that because somebody asked about it it was like oh i like it but i don't like all the emails so i'm like okay uh i also have an amazon wish list i'll talk about what's on there this was bought off my amazon wish list uh, Android 18 was bought off my Amazon wish list. Uh, here it is. I'll look there and we'll see. Uh, some stuff is, does not have Amazon Prime on it right now. Um, but a lot of times that fluctuates. So like uh, the Gun Sea Destiny um, that is right there at the top. Um, that uh, that right now is not uh, has Amazon Prime, but it did three days ago. So if something doesn't have Prime, take a look at it later. It might get it again. Uh, and the prices fluctuate, but like all these kits are things that I would like to build. If you ever would like to buy something on there that you don't see that you think you would like to see me build on stream, just let me know. Um, uh, because I'm always interested in picking up cool kits and building them. I know that board Ming sent me something that I'll be building in the next year because it's coming from Japan. And so it's going to take a while to get there. But yeah, there's a bunch of stuff on there that I think are cool kits that I would like to build someday. Um, and so if there's something you, you think that would be fun to see on stream, you could buy it. Maybe you got a gift card coming up uh, at the holidays. Someone sends you some, you know, like gift cards because they know they just, they know they can't buy something you want. You get an Amazon gift card, you buy something for me and I build it. That's that. Uh, I've got my tip jar on coffee. Um, that's just like a one-time thing. And then anything I make on coffee or patreon or twitch a twitch payout is coming to me at some point probably in the middle of january all that goes into me buying more kits so that i can build them on stream that's all it is you you find something cool i put it together i put it out i build it uh, or equipment you know i buy equipment to make my streams run better um like i said i'm looking at a better lighting solution uh I think I can make a bar with a stand and a couple lights that would hang and really balance my light. Um, I'm looking into that. I'm looking at some DIY to pick up some equipment at uh, the hardware store, even Ikea, it looks like, and put something together. 
pretty easily that would be very portable. So I'm looking at that. That's like a thing that I might buy in January with some of the money that comes in from these things. Uh, I should say I do have a um, uh, Build Bear community. That's my Discord. I didn't mention that on Thursday. I forgot to mention my Discord. But yeah, maybe you want to jump into my Discord. It's pretty cool. And then finally, as I said, I do have a show, Shit Arcade, which is January 18th, 10 p.m. at Union Hall. If you're in the New York area, uh, come out. It should be good doing that that's it uh those are the ads but yeah um any way you can support even if hey if you, you can't financially support chatting during the during the stream that's huge for me especially on saturday when i've like kind of like had a lot to say on thursday maybe i don't have as much to say on a saturday having things to talk about is huge for me it's really helpful because it, it keeps me going and then also uh, telling friends. If you know somebody that likes building, that likes when I appear on Giant Bomb stuff, that likes my panels at PAX, um, you know, feel free to let them know. Because there's always people who are like, I didn't know you streamed. And it's like, okay, I get that. Um, uh, and now we're going to get back to building. Thank you very much for that momentary break where I talk about things. I appreciate you sticking around. Um, so we'll put that to a side so we can do some building over here. So uh, a thing that uh, someone reached out about asked me if I was doing the Giant Bomb, uh, Giant Beast Cast uh, bonus uh, podcast, and I don't know right now. Scheduling everyone is tough every year. Uh, it might make sense for everyone if they stream on Thursday while I am on a plane. So... That's a bummer, and I'm not thrilled about that. I don't know for sure. I'm hoping that it happens after I land, and I can, like, go somewhere and, you know, turn on a, a, turn on a microphone and, and do it, uh, or, like, Skype in or Discord in or something. So I'm hoping I will be able to do that because I really look forward to it, but, like, you know... Vinny's got kids. Je uh, Jeff has a kid. Austin is runs a website. Like, folks are busier than me. I'd rather have them have the time to get to do that fun thing. And not, like, have them wait until I get off a plane and get back to Brooklyn before we stream. But I don't know. So I'm hoping it'll work out. But uh, it might not. Which is a shame. Because I really genuinely really enjoy um doing uh that podcast and getting a little uh role play in um let's see uh i'm gonna tweet out i'm gonna retweet my own tweet because now it's hour two uh so we'll retweet this no Add some text to it. Um, Eastern. Great. All right. Um. So I didn't do a. Uh, I didn't do it like an end of the year list for music or game or I did games. I didn't do music or anime or anything like that. Um. Music, I'd probably have to research. I mean, uh, let's see. Uh, Big Frida's uh, EP, summer EP, came out and was like five banging ass tracks and really good. That's the thing I listened to like the most this year. Um, I think a lot of Cher's ABBA covers are really solid. Um, I know you don't come here for for uh, share talk or ABBA talk, but I mean, th some of those were good. So I think that was good. Uh, didn't really listen to a lot of music this year. Um, new music, I'll say. Uh, but I did, um, you know, I certainly watched a lot of anime this year. So I can tell you about some anime that I thought was stellar. I mean, it's all stuff we talked about here. 
my favorite show of the year is Laid Back Camp. I just watched episode 11. Episode 11 and 12 are like a two-parter. Um, but uh, episode 11 is the, them all camping together. And it, it also features um, uh, them all wearing Santa costumes because it's Christmas. It's Christmas camping. They all go Christmas camping together. And it rules. Uh, and uh, one thing I did want to point out, I don't know if I've ever made this statement about the show. But one of the things, like obviously Laid Back Camp is, is beautiful because it's like a really fun show and is about friendship and trying things because other people seem to like it and finding your way in the world and respecting other people and how they like to live their lives. Um, and it's cute. But also, they're so funny with one another. These girls are really funny. And I think that's a thing that like some media gets wrong when it comes to uh, female friendship. Is They're all like cutting jokes on each other and being silly with each other and being fun with each other. And it's like, really, it feels really true. And it's, it's a really fun show like that. Um, so that was my favorite anime of the year. It came out early in the year too. So, uh, and then I think cells at work was fantastic. Um, totally loved it. I think it's a, uh, a fantastic, cool action show. I think the art style is really cool. I think it's really inventive and interesting. I'm looking forward to the bonus episode and finding out how I can watch that. Um, yeah, I think that show rules, and I was psyched to see it. Um, I think my biggest disappointment was uh, has been... Uh, I don't even remember if the, if the second season was... I think the second season started at the end of last year and then the third season came out this year. Like the second half of the second season, really. But um, uh, Overlord, I liked the first season a lot. And I think that the second season and the third season, there's a little bit of world building that's pretty fun. Um, but for the most part, I think it sucks. It is a bummer. Uh, and I'm... Uh, I'm bummed about that because, like I said, I like that show. And I wanted to like it more than I ended up liking it. So that was uh, really frustrating. That's like biggest disappointment of the year. Um, I also think that How Not to Summon a Demon Lord is really disappointing. I watched every episode of that. I didn't end up stopping. Um, I think it was too, like, gross in its in its horniness. Uh but the premise is so interesting that it's really frustrating because uh, that show, like I said, had like, I think a very strong, cool premise of being very good in a video game, like an MMO, and then waking up in a world and you're embodying that character that you were really good at, but you're not good at being a social person. So you're having to pretend to be this incredible uh, demonic force, but you're not good at it. Um, but I think it, yeah, it was, uh, it was gross in a lot of parts and hard to recommend. So that was a shame. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I want to say about some anime stuff? I'm sure there's other shows that I liked. Uh, you know, a, a late entry was, um, a show that I binge watched, uh, uh, today's menu for Emiya's house. I like that came out of nowhere. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know anything about the fate night series or the fate series, I should say. Um, so to suddenly be really invested in a show like that, a, a parody slash spinoff of that was really unique and weird. Um, but I had a good time with it. I just, I'm, still really surprised that I ended up watching that show. Uh, I mean, there were half episodes, but still. And then, of course, um, Skullface bookseller Honda-san, I'm, I'm going to be bummed about the 12th episode of that show. I really, really love that show. The 11th episode made me tear up again. Uh, as I said, 
If you ever worked retail, I think you find a lot in common with that show, especially if you worked by selling books. It's very specific to uh, manga and, uh, selling and, you know, in Japanese bookstores. Um, but in general, I think it's a really sweet, cool series with a lot of heart. And it was nice to have that. Uh, as you all know, I really like Slice of Life. It's my favorite genre of anime. So having a couple really good Slice of Life shows this year has been rad. It was a really good year. This past season was really good for Slice of Life. So it's nice to have those. Especially when you're like not really into some other shows that you thought you'd be into. It's nice to have a couple shows that you can get into. All right, so to put this on here, I put this on like this, and then like this. But yeah, let me know what was some of your favorite like shows. You know, it could be anime, it could be TV shows. Uh, I think Making It was really good. I, uh, I think um, Nailed It is incredible. Uh, and I think Nailed It works because it's people being bad at things, but being aware they're bad at things. And, you know, it's like, and Nicole will make fun of a thing you made, but she's not making fun of you for making it. She's making fun of, like, how it turned out and knowing how it's going to turn out. Uh, but I think everybody who does the show understands what what show they're signing up for. They get what they're getting into. Uh, just like finishing a thing. And I always liked that about the show where people were like, I finished it. Like they got to, to finish a thing they were working on and it's not going to win and it's not going to be good. It's not good. It's not up to the snuff, but uh, it's still a really fun, cool show uh, and fun to see. And the crafting thing was, was pretty great. You still need to see the Christmas special of that. And, uh, Agresugo. Uh, yeah, I, I'm behind on that show. I like that show a lot, but I'm, I never really finished it. I don't know. I mean, I say I like it, but I didn't finish it. So maybe I don't like it as much as I think I did. I think it's fun, but, uh, Oh, did let me let me look that up. When did that show come out? Uh, love is hard for Taku. When did that show come out? Um, looking it up now. You don't have to look it up. I'm looking it up. Uh, April. Oh yeah, April through June. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shows of the year. Uh, and apparently there's a live action movie coming out. Huh. I had no idea. Uh, wow, okay. That's coming out in 2020 in Japanese theaters, a live action movie of it. Uh, that's on Amazon Prime. Um, I definitely recommend it. I, it was only 11 episodes, which is weird. 11 is such a weird number because, like, I understand 12 and then sometimes doing 13 because it's like the DVD bonus or Blu ray bonus or TV special. Uh, or just doing a full 13. But 11 is such a weird number. I like didn't know it was over. I went to go watch episode 12, and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and I guess next year, there is going to be an OVA of it. I'm looking on Wikipedia. But yeah, Love is Hard for Taku, I think, is a fun show. It's a fun dating show. Uh, hello, Robot Crank. Welcome. But yeah, I, I would recommend uh, Love is Hard for Taku. I think that's like a, a fun relationship show that I definitely enjoyed. Yeah, I, I'd have to go back and look at what came out this year. Look at some lists and see. You know, obviously I like things that not everybody likes. And I understand that. And sometimes I'm into a thing. Uh, especially the genres I like that are not everyone's cup of tea. But yeah. There's some good stuff out there. Like Comic Girls, I don't think was incredible, but it was very positive and like and same thing with Slow Start. Slow Start and Comic Girls are two like shows that I don't, you know, I didn't see a lot of people talking about. Um 
and I think like slow start I actually think is really cool and fun they're similar and they both feature like a main character who's like just you feel you at some point you stop feeling bad for them and you're like all right put fucking work on yourself change your life what is this uh but it's all the other characters around it they're pretty good and then um what was that in one what was the in one that uh the haunted hot springs Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs. Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs was fun. It was a little more relationship and a little less slice of life than I thought it was going to be. I was kind of hoping for more about like the other characters. It was great because the, the other characters did get involved in the, the main guy, but like kind of understood what the deal was uh, and who was going to end up in a relationship. So I, I did I did enjoy that show. But um, like I said, I think... Uh, say one yeah um i wish it was a little more slice of life and a little less dating show but the premise the premise of a guy who uh who exercises spirits by punching them in he doesn't use spells he uses his fists i love that premise so much that i kind of had to i think i i would always really be into that show because I think the premise is so funny. Um, all right, so we did one hand there. That's the closed fist hands. Uh, one, I don't like... Uh, you can't even see it, so I'll put it over here. Uh, I don't like this fist, this closed fist. I don't like that there's no hole there. I think that's actually surprisingly crappy for these kits. But I think the arm arm looks good otherwise it's just that i don't think that i'll probably use the open hands instead of the closed one because i think that's not as cool there's other choices in hands so i'll probably end up using that we'll wait for that at the end but yeah um yeah i don't know i, I think that there there are definitely some good shows that came out this year i just some of them didn't hit me uh, right. And, of course, there's all the stuff that came out this season that I haven't, you know, perfectly chose to wait on. I'm going to binge through. I'm waiting for, like, a bunch of fairy tale to come out because, like I said, I never watched that show when it, you know, when it first came out. I never watched it uh, as it aired. So I'll do that. Uh, it sounds like Sword Art is getting good, but... It did do the thing that I'm the least interested about Sword Art is the thing with Sword Art Online is that there's some world building of it that's fucking awesome, but they abandon that world building as soon as a new season starts or a new half chapter of a season starts. And if you really liked a character that is not Kirito, sorry, because they're just going to get rid of all those characters and introduce a new one. Uh, and I know people really did enjoy Gun Gale Online, the spinoff that focused on other characters. Um, and I think some of those characters are cool, but I'm just like not super into that, sh like the idea of, uh, what was I saying? What was I trying to say here? Oh yeah, I'm just like not as into the idea of a show that abandons all its characters every time a new season starts because they want to focus on other character on just introducing a ton of brand new ones. Like you get attached to characters and you want to see them. And it's weird to uh, just abandon them so that you can uh, introduce a whole new batch of characters. Uh, are there any manga you're reading? I jumped to the new Shonen Jump sub, and I'm reading My, My Hero Academia. I also read that time I got resurrected as Yamcha, and it was fun. Uh, no, I haven't really. Last book, uh, I, I've done more mainstream comics. I mean, by main, and by mainstream, I mean I've done a lot of some indie comic stuff more than I have been looking at, um, anything, uh, in the world of manga. I've been thinking about a Shonen subscription, but I just joined another thing so 
That's going to be ways away. I uh, I got Dropout. Um, Dropout is from the... Uh, uh, it is the Big Breakfast, which is like the production company behind um, College Humor and all, and all of their subsidiaries, which includes uh, Dorkly and Drawfee. I really like Drawfee. Those people are incredible and really fun, hardworking folks that make really good content. I highly recommend their videos, um, especially their like either their knockoffs or their like artists draw this without remembering what it looks like or have a certain time. Like a lot of their drawing challenges are incredibly entertaining and fun, and they're really good people. So I was like, ah, oh, I should probably get a subscription to this thing and get a series and basically they have a series on there um that is like a what if they had a, basically had the money for a full cartoon show and i know they've been looking forward to doing that for a long time so i was happy to to throw them some money but that's that's a subscription for that instead of other things really when it comes down to it um and there's a, a, a real play podcast, a real play show um, that's like D and D show that takes place in a high school that's pretty cool on there, and a few other things that they have. And then like, if you were a big college humor fan and you're a big Jake and Amir fan, they have a new show on there. I was never super into them uh, as a as a performance piece, so that doesn't appeal to me as some people does. But it's cool that they they're going for it with a subscription service. Uh, and I want to support comedy and internet stuff that I think is good. So I end up getting that. Uh, hello, Sin. Uh, I'm doing well. Thanks for jumping in. Uh, happy holidays and all that. Um, yeah, I'm doing good. We're working on our perfect cell here. Uh, excited to keep working on this kit. Um, I'm chatting about some, you know, we did some year of the end stuff that, uh, we're into, um, the Last Dream Daddy is out. Five issue comic uh, published by Oni. Uh, cannot recommend it enough. I think it is. Uh, they're, they're, each book is from the perspective of like kind of follows one of the daddies and is has a bunch of different artists. Uh, so many queer writers and artists worked on that book. They like, like I can't quote you and tell you that Oni made no money on it, but I know they hired a lot of people to work on it. And it was a, a passion project. Uh, you can get it as DLC digitally. Um, uh, so I, I definitely recommend. Uh, no, there's not a cult path sin, uh, and they did not. They did not follow that in these books. Um, uh, but uh, DJ Kirkland worked on the the issue that just came out. Uh, it was a great. Uh, comic creator was a book coming out uh, called Black Mage it's coming out next year um, Black Mage is going to ruffle a lot of feathers and turn a lot of heads and make some assholes angry and I can't wait to read it I think it's going to be a really great piece of art so I'm glad that uh, DJ got to work on something else in the meantime while that's coming out uh, but yeah um of course, I have them all. Well, I don't have five, but I have one through four, and I got those uh, hardback. But you can actually get them as DLC if you have Steam, uh, if you bought Dream Daddy through Steam, and I, maybe iOS, but I don't know for sure. But now on Steam, you can just get it, all the comics as DLC, and they're going to do a, they'll do a collection with like all the covers, and they did, so they did like the, Chris Ankh did all of the covers, and he's fantastic. Highly recommend uh, checking out his work. Um, so I think it all looks really cool and they had a bunch of guest artists do stuff and it's, it's a, a really beautiful book. It's one of my favorite collections of the year. Cause I, uh, um, also my boyfriend is a bear is a fantastic book. Obviously, uh, my last name's bear, but it's about a real bear and it's, uh, it is a really heartfelt, um, book. Um, and uh, Kim Reaper, if you have uh, someone in your life who is uh, a teen, 
uh, looking for some young adult that's pretty cool. Uh, Kim Reaper is awesome. It is about a college student who gets a part-time job as a Grim Reaper and is trying to deal with dating and also you know, having a part-time job that's also very dangerous. Uh, it is a really fun book. Uh, the first volume's out and like the second story is coming out now. That book is really fun. Um, I'd recommend that. Um, I don't know if I have any other like year-end stuff. Stuff that I'm like, this is the thing that I'm into. Y'all should get into it. Um, oh, uh, new podcast that came out this year. I think you two would get along. I recommend I think you two would get along. It is the Kickstarter Games podcast. It is uh, co-hosted by Trin Garitano, the Trin Train. Um, and uh, Trin and other folks from G Kickstarter, the games division, uh, the tabletop games division, uh, put out a podcast where the idea is they get someone who is just having a Kickstarter kind of come out who's new to crowdfunding and someone that has established who's done crowdfunding before uh, kind of have a conversation, which they lead the conversation, the hosts lead the conversation. And it's it's a lot about the process of doing a Kickstarter or any kind of crowdfunding thing, but it's also about like, the, you know, the things people have in common and uh, finding common ground that way. Uh, it's very informative, especially if you're interested in doing a uh, crowdfunding campaign of your own. I think there's a lot of good tips in it, but it's also like, just like hearing cool creators talk to one another. It's pretty neat. And you don't necessarily get that a lot. Uh, oh, uh, we have a new follower. Uh, Epic Open World is now following. Thank you very much for hopping in, Epic Open World. That's a good-ass username. Um, thanks for coming in here. Uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, all right, so this goes in here. We are working on our perfect cell here. We're, we finished one arm. We're doing the other arm, which is, you know, identical, basically. So it shouldn't be too hard to put together. But we, we'll get that together there. Um, yeah, so I think that's the... Uh, that's it for, for recommendations of, of that stuff. I think Making It was one of the only TV shows I watched... Um, because uh, I don't really watch a lot of TV. I watch like a lot of anime and a lot of um. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep watching, but I've been watching a bit of uh. Um, I want to say that Epic is a GPRLT fan. Maybe Will Smith. Too many fandoms. Yeah, it's possible. Um. But welcome aboard. Uh, either way. Uh, sometimes people just like kind of check it out. See what, what I'm doing. They know I stream. But they it's not you know they have their people their go to's. Uh, yes fan uh, to those. Well great. And welcome Epic. It's it's nice to have you here. Um, glad to have you here in the stream. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, I'm watching, uh, what is it, Many a True Nerd? He does a lot of um, different Let's Plays. I mean, it's a Let's Play channel, but does, has done in the past a bunch of, like, Fallout stuff, including a lot of Fallout New Vegas. And Fallout New Vegas is one of my favorite games of all time. So it's been kind of cool to pop in. I don't know if I'm going to stick with him, because some of the new stuff he's putting out, I'm not super interested in. But... Uh, doing that and that's also like him and another creator or how i kind of keep up on fallout and it's weird that there's a fallout game that's out there that i'm not playing i feel very strange about that because i played the last three i mean four because i did play not a lot i didn't i didn't go hog wild with um fallout shelter but i certainly played it because I, you know, it was interesting. I just not much for that style of game, but I did play it because it was kind of fun to play around with different with the, with the game. So I have been, you know, keeping an eye on uh, Fallout seventy six, but it doesn't seem to be what I want. 
So I'm watching some people that, you know, do lore videos and some people that do, they're doing like, you know, exploration of it and kind of streaming as they go or making YouTube videos as they go uh, in, in one case. So like, it's just weird. I, I, I'm, I've been trying to like think about how to say it properly and I am coming up a little short on it, but it is very strange that there is a uh, a Fallout game that's just not my thing. Uh, uh, Epic says, uh, I'm looking for new cool chill Twitch channels to watch. Pat seems like a good guy. Well, thank you very much, Epic. I, I, I hope I am. I like to think that I am. Uh, these streams are pretty laid back. We do talk about, you know, we occasionally get into some real conversation because that's part of life. But, you know, mostly keep it light. Talk about anime talk about pop culture stuff talk about games uh you know of course i'm building model kits and so sometimes we talk about those kits like especially we had a lot to say about the last kit we built the 160 scale non-grade wing zero because that was really interesting because i don't normally build non-grades so it was kind of fun to build that um zorbs says i really like Fallout 76 i get pooped on all the time for it uh and then Sin says, uh, they made a game that ticks zero of the boxes, you meant, uh, that follow three New Vegas and four ticked. Yeah, I mean, so I liked the crafting and the world, I liked the, like, settlement building stuff in four, probably more than most people. And so, I, you know, I, I think I will at some point when they unlock more things be interested in Fallout 76. And if you like Fallout 76, Zorbs, I'm not, you know, telling you, I'm not here to poop on you for that uh, at all. It isn't the Fallout game I want because it just isn't the Fallout game I want. Um, I like NPCs. I like, I think, especially like, as I said, if my favorite of the modern ones is New Vegas, then... That's a game with tons of great characters and NPCs. And I think Fallout 4 has it as well. Um, I think there's a lot to really like about those series uh, when it comes to, like, the world building. And I think just letters and, uh, you know, holotapes doesn't really do it for me. Uh, like, I, I followed along, um, I follow on YouTube uh, Oxhorn who that's that person's bread that guy's bread and butter is making fallout lore videos that's what he does um and i think he does a very good job with it but um so i followed like there's the mistress of mysteries see um is an incredibly great lore rich uh like chain of quests and it's really interesting I mean, it's not because there are no humans out there except for, you know, what? it's not a spoiler to say, you ain't going to meet a mistress of mysteries. You're not going to meet anyone. You're not going to meet anyone alive. So, like, that to me isn't great. But if it's a game that you're into, be into it. I'm glad. Uh... Uh, Epic says, New Vegas, best Fallout game. Super excited for a new game from that studio and those creators. Uh, and NPCs in world permanence. If the world was less instanced and I could have a dedicated server, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's just like, I don't know. I like having, I like that part of world building. To me, that's a thing that's very important. Um, and, uh, I mean, New Vegas is so janky and there's so many mods that like try to fix it and it's still like broken in a lot of ways because they had very little time to make that and they're already a company that goofs up when they do have time so obsidian you know that obsidian was did its best but it was certainly not where it a hundred percent needed to be and they they you know they said as much i think they had like a year and a half to make that game based on the follow three engine so it's pretty impressive all the things they did in that limited time. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I, I really like New Vegas and I like the character work that they, they got in there. So, uh, it is, uh, yeah, it's just not what I'm looking for in a fallout. Um, I also like mods. I mean, I love mods because the game engines aren't perfect and aren't great and mods make the, the stuff cool. Like there's some mods that are pretty bad, uh, but there are certainly uh, mods that are incredible and make it such an interesting experience. Uh, Sin says the Yes Man is probably the best Dave Foley appearance ever. I think... I. I agree i think the choices they made in that game as far as voice actors are top notch i think like i think dave foley is fantastic at it i think rob cordry as uh as the one of the comedians outside the uh, the tops is such a great portrayal um i think felicia day is incredible as veronica uh i think that's still Veronica might be my favorite companion of all time. And I think that she has a lot to do with that because you just, you feel for her so much in her predicament and her situation uh, that I think like, yeah, I think she's so great in that. I like, I think there's a lot of great characters in that world. Um, and certainly in Dave Foley's case, it, it seems to be a thing that he is, he gets what they want from him and is delivering it. And I think that's that's very nice. Uh, I think he does, yeah, he just does a great job with that. Getting the, the idea that, you know, the Yes Man is a robot and has been programmed to, you know, be supportive even in, like, and, and at some point knows that, like, oh, that's a, that's a way to go if you're sure. And, like, clearly that's not what the robot wants to say. This artificial intelligence wants to, like, tell you you messed up. And you're like, why would you side with the Omertas, dummy? That's a stupid idea. Uh, but he's like, okay, shake up the strip that way. Uh, oh, I really like that. It's very clever. But, yeah, I mean, I, I come for, for the NPCs and the companions. That's what I'm looking for. Not all companions are equal i think that like fallout 3 like has a few memorable companions but it's not really about that and i think new vegas is all about your companions um clearly the cannibals are a better faction they try to be clean oh those the white glove society Ugh. gross bring up the white glove society around me no uh I mean, the boomers are the best, right? I'm no guns nut. I would not consider myself a gun nut. Uh, I think the boomers get a bad rap because people are like, oh, they're just the Second Amendment faction. It's like, no. They lived in a society where they were raised to believe that everyone has weapons. And then somebody decided they couldn't have weapons anymore. So they took a bunch of them and then left that place. They didn't... They weren't like the person that put the bomb in the pool that led to all the radiation, the little ghouls. They were the ones that were like, you know what? We're out. We're out. We're going to find a place that likes what we're into. And they did find a place that likes what they're into. And that's awesome. Uh, let's see. I think the thing of the most is not having a DJ that talks about the things you're done in the world. Yes, Zorbs. I think having a DJ that talks about what you're, what you're up to is great. Even if I don't use it that much, even like in Fallout 4, I really liked having, um, the, like, uh, um, the, uh, radio, you know, like the Minutemen radio that kind of like let you know what was going on. Even if it was like all quiet or if it was like, oh, this thing is happening. Like that kind of ambiance is really cool. Uh, especially, you know, if you, you know, you're like, yeah, I think like, Mad Dog Radio is cool. Like, those things are, are neat, and I, I'm definitely into that. Um, off topic, I think it was a mistake to drink an energy drink at 8.30 Mountain Time. Epic. Um, unless you really want to be up for a while, I would probably agree with you. I'm not one for energy drinks myself. 
Um, and in fact, part of my diet has been cutting down on, on caffeinated beverages a lot. I still drink it with meals, but I don't just like drink it while I'm around. I'm trying to drink a lot more water. And one of the benefits of that is that I've definitely been sleeping better. Uh, it's easier for me to fall asleep now that I'm not having late night caffeine. Um, but also, you know, I'm not in a position in my life now where I have to be up for hours and hours and hours. I think like I'm probably going to have to have some caffeine when I get to the airport. I'm going to hopefully find a food court that's open. I mean, I don't think I will. It'll be hours before things open. So I might end up just getting like pizza at Port Authority or something. But I'm definitely going to have to have some caffeine to get me to be awake to get on my plane. And then when I get on the plane, it's not that long a flight. And I will hopefully just nap on the plane. That's the goal anyway. Um, but yeah, I might need something. I mean, it's caffeine to kind of keep me going. I might end up having to pick up an energy drink or just a regular soda to kind of keep me going there. Uh, imagine a fallout set in New York. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> With Lynn Thigpen as the DJ. I think like, I think a New York fallout would be interesting. Um, I think about like Boston made, Boston made a lot of sense because it is a city, but because it's like, uh, but I love the warriors and that concept. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think, um, it's interesting for that because, uh, one of the reasons why I think, uh, Boston works is because, Boston is such an old city that there's so much of that city is like suburbs and like wooded area that you can kind of, you know, uh, in my opinion, one of the parts about, uh, you know, fall three that I don't love is like, well, the capital wasteland, they had to like destroy a lot of it because like the city's rough and it's kind of tough. And then one of the things I love the most about fall, uh, fallout new Vegas is that like, there are super mutants out there, but it's not all about super mutants, which is great because I don't love a lot of super mutants. And of course, there are plenty more in 4. Um, I like that Fallout 4 or Fallout New Vegas, you're really just attacking a lot of humans. Shitty, shitty humans. You're going after fiends. You're going after if you're playing in you know the way I play. You're going after powder gangers. You know you're uh, you're going you know like you've got the vipers and all the other like uh, raider gangs and like taking them all out and like you're going hardcore into making that your thing and you're not fight you know you're fighting like wild animals but you're not fighting unless you get the perks that you're not fighting as many but uh, you're not really fighting super mutants that much. And there are ghouls, but they're not like as much as other things. As you know, and in Fallout, it feels like Fallout Four feels like most things you're fighting are super mutants. I um, just kind of get sick of that. Um, oh, uh, Epic says I would like Fallout to go outside the U.S. Fallout Paris, maybe. Uh, yeah, that could be that could be interesting. Um, uh, a European fallout. It, it might be nice to see what the rest of the world looks like, you know, like, yeah, what what's good and bad about the rest of the world. Uh, Death Claws really powerful in New Vegas. Yes, I Death Claws and Fallout 4, like, like, obviously, yes, you have a minigun and you have uh, you have power armor when you fight a Death Claw in Fallout 4. But also you fight a Death Claw really early in Fallout 4 and it's not. It's, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's not the hardest thing in the world. And I think, like, New Vegas did a great job of being like, no, 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 no. Don't go to Sloan. You can go to Sloan if you want. And it's almost like they put Sloan there, the uh, where all the Death Claws are, so that you have, so that you, like, would go there early and realize quickly that Death Claws will just mess you up. Like, you got to be careful. Cazadors will mess you up. Like, there's things in the Fallout universe in New Vegas that are just, like, rough. Uh, and you got to be careful. 
Yeah, because a death claw will just wreck your stuff completely and utterly destroy you. But when you when when you're like strong enough, when you got power armor and you've got, uh, you know, good good weapons, like you can really trounce a uh, a death claw, and it feels pretty awesome. Are right, working on our feet here. We are going to go to 11 p.m. I might cut out a couple minutes early, but we'll go close to 11. Um, probably just get the other leg done. I mean, we we're close to being done here, so. But I'm not going to push past 11 because I do have to uh, clean up and get stuff together and get ready to go on a plane. I've got to upload this video uh, to YouTube, and I want to send out the link to that. And I, I could, I guess, just leave my apartment with it uploading, but then my computer is on for a whole week, and I don't want to do that, so, because you got to leave a window open when you're uploading, and I also don't want to wait until I get to South Carolina to upload it, so, I will have to do some stuff around here, kind of get my stuff together and be ready to head out, so... We finished a leg. Work on another, we'll work on. We'll finish the other leg, and then what we'll do is on. Um, uh, what were we gonna say? Oh, on uh, Thursday when I come back, we will finish up um, this kit, and then we will start on uh, Android 18. But yeah. Um, We'll get a little bit more done. Like I said, we won't finish this up, but we will get close to finishing up. So I've got to, uh, as I said, I got stuff I got to get take care of before I head to the airport. And like I said, uh, I'm going to Newark, Newark Airport. Um, my flight is at seven in the morning. So I want to be there at five in the morning because I do have to check a bag, unfortunately. Don't like checking bags, but that means I got to get there. And because it's early in the morning, uh, I have to... It's one of those things where, like, the airport closes, which makes sense for a while, and then it reopens, and so anyone with an early flight will be waiting to check their bags and get through security. So there'll be, like, a line of people waiting for the machines to turn on or people to show up, uh, which is really frustrating, but I understand because it's not a 24-hour airport. That's why I love flying JetBlue, because JetBlue at JFK is an interna international uh, terminal. And so they are open 24 hours. And so you don't have to worry about that. But not flying JetBlue this time, flying United. And so I have to get there pretty early. And that also means that if I have to get there early, uh, I have to, like, fly through. Uh, Sin, I am not pre-check. Um, I am, uh, looking into it for next year. Uh, um, really what it is, is I, uh, I've, I've, you know, I've done the, the, the research about it. It's just a matter of doing it up until recently. I only flew like once or twice a year this year. I did fly several times. So, um, and then next year, I think I, will probably be flying uh, at least three times, if not four. So I'm going to look at it for next year. Uh, Epic says I refuse to fly that early. See, I, I don't mind it. Um, I don't mind flying early if it means that I can get there and that I'm there. Uh, I usually rather do that than spend my whole day in the airport. I'd rather just spend a night and have it be annoying. Um, but yeah, I... I mean, I, I haven't confirmed anything, but I do think I'm going to be flying four times next year. And for me, that getting um, pre-check or global entry, but getting pre-check. Um, uh, I somehow am pre-check every time, even having never paid for it. It might be because a family member now works for a three-letter acronym. Yes, yeah, Sin, you might just be benefiting from someone. Oh, and I, Harold, I missed that. You said I had a good trip. Thank you. I appreciate that. I will. Um... But yeah, I uh, I need to get it because now, like I said, I, I think I'm going to be flying four times next year. Uh, if everything goes well, I will be going to 
Emerald City Comic Con uh, in Seattle. And then I will be going to... Uh, uh, well, I'll be going back to San Diego Comic Con. That's the hope. And then also be going to uh, PAX West. That's a guaranteed. And then at Christmas time, I'll go see my folks. Actually, I did fly four times this year because in August, I went home for my parents' anniversary. But I didn't know at the beginning of this year. At this year, I th it looked like I was going to go to Emerald City Comic Con. I didn't know that I was going to San Diego Comic Con this year until pretty close to San Diego. So... That's why I didn't do it this year, but I did fly four times this year. Uh, so I definitely should look into pre-check because it would definitely save me some. Um, uh, I got, I went for as much of a deal as I could get this year or this trip home, but it does mean that I am in this weird thing where uh, I couldn't pick my seat and I couldn't, and I'm boarding last and I don't get to put anything in the overhead and there's no upgrades possible for me. Uh, it's like economy class or some terrible thing, um, which is really annoying. Uh, it's really frustrating. In fact, actually, I'm going to take a second here and just uh, probably gotta check in here. Let's see if I have to check in. No, nope, it looks like I'm okay. Uh, but yeah, I can't put anything in the overhead, and I'm going to be boarding last, and I can't make any... Uh, if I wanted to upgrade my flight, I have to pay a bunch of money just to upgrade. It is uh, really annoying. But uh, I'm going to go and double-check, make sure everything's okay here. And I'm most likely I'll be sitting in a middle seat, because right now uh, I have not been able to... Um, uh, I have not been able to uh, choose that, so we'll see. And then, let's see what you guys say in here. Eight full hours for GB fam to show up. SEC is just good reason. Yeah, uh, I know. I was there this year. And it was really fun. And then I got to see Aaron. We did some building together, and that was really cool. Uh, we we built in my hotel room uh, and did a, a travel build, and that was really really fun. Um, all right, I'm going to start wrapping up here. Uh, we will move on. We will finish this up uh, next Thursday in my normal time. We're not going to miss any streaming time. So we will be able to get back into the building there, finish that up, and then move on to Android 18, which is the next kit we're building. Uh, this was purchased by Lashbrook on my wish list. And then uh, 18 was purchased by um, the lovely and wonderful Alexandra, uh, who built uh, all the moats. Uh, Aaron is the best. Aaron is wonderful. I miss him so much. And uh, yes, one of the reasons I want to go is, uh, wow. Oh, they want me to get a travel voucher. And so they want me to get a travel voucher. And they want me to instead fly to tomorrow, Sunday night. Or on Monday. And I'm like, no. No, I'm not doing that. That's not going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to go and take care of my stuff here. Uh, I wish you all the best. I will be back on um, uh, Thursday night. We will continue this. We will finish this up. We don't have much left to do. We've got to finish the leg. we got to build the waist. And we got to put it all together. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get going and get ready for to head out to my flight, upload this video for my Patreon. So uh, this has been the Buildware Workshop. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Epic, it was nice to have you here. Thanks for joining in. I hope everyone has a great rest of their weekend. And uh, I might do a like, hey, here's the presents I got. Let's hang out stream. If I do that, that'll be on Wednesday because I'm not going to do that on Christmas. And I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.